Yes. <coughs> First of all, thank you very much for the lecture. <coughs> I have two questions. Two, at the very end, you answered the first one, which was, what motivated Darby to go into that direction, but to do it from expect? My second question is the following. It falls into the Gentiles category, and I'll take Armenians as the Gentiles. How does Armenian Christian philosophy interpret these details and how it is incorporated okay, into our philosophy, literature, understandings, and so forth? And eventually, when there was a division of the doctrines, so to speak, how did we defend ourselves based on these details that you come I'm up? glad you asked this question. Uh, in reality, our Armenian theologians were very biblical. If you study the earliest Sharagans, you will find references to North Israel, the New Israel. Sioni Vortik Zartik, there is Sharagan called Sioni Vortik Zartik, meaning sons of Zion arise. And who are the sons of Zion? Those who believe in Christ. Okay, who is the new Israel? Those who believe in Christ. When, uh, when children are baptized at the Armenian Apostolic Church, uh, this was the ritual that was followed in Jerusalem. I don't know if they follow it here, but uh, after the ceremony at the church, uh, the priest accompanies the parents and the relatives to the home, to the home of the, uh, of, of, of the child. And the mother is found seated there, and the, the priest comes and places the, the newly baptized son in her arms and, uh, and sings a sharadan which says, this child is now incorporated into the new Israel. So, in the Armenian sharadans, there are reference to Nord Israel, Sioni Vortik, uh, and that reflects the theology of the Apostle Paul in a very, very clear way, without any ambiguity. There is no ambiguity at all that the Armenian uh, uh, hymn writers and Armenian theologians like Rikorda Tevatsi, uh, Nerses Norani, all of these believed that the Christians, by virtue of their faith, they co constitute the new Israel, the spiritual Israel. And we, the Christians, are the sons of Zion, not the unbelieving Jews. So this is from the perspective of the Armenian sharagans and the Armenian theologians. Does that answer your question? Okay. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Where do the American evangelicals, evangelists, evangelicals stand in that respect? I don't know <laughs> where they are. The Armenian evangelicals don't have a well-defined no, theology. Because they have Americans. Yeah. Americans. Americans. Oh, it's <laughs> in, in today's America, the most <coughs> ardent proponent of dispensationalist theology is John Hagee. Have you heard of John Hagee? Yes. And his interpretation of the Bible makes me laugh. Let me give you an example. He says, uh, God promised Abraham to make his progeny as numerous as the grains of sand on the beach and as numerous as the stars in heaven. Now he says, the the sand grains on the beach belong are earthly, the stars are heavenly. So he says the, the promises, the earthly promises contained in the law belong to the people of Israel and the heavenly promises contained in the gospel belong to the church because the sands on the beach are the people of Israel and the stars of heaven are the Christian Gentiles. This is a very whimsical uh, interpretation. Uh, the, the fellow doesn't want to change his doctrine. He's 
trying to find a justification for it by misinterpreting the Bible, by making the Bible say what it doesn't mean. When God told Abraham that his, uh, he would be the father of the nation and that his children, his progeny, would be as numerous as the sand and the stars, he was saying that he would be the father of a great nation. That's all. He doesn't refer to any distinction between Israel and the church. He doesn't refer to that. It's like the Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, if you might have the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witnesses take uh, God's promise that he would create a new heavens and a new earth. God says, I'll create new heavens and new earth. Meaning he will create a new cosmos, a new universe. But the Jehovah's Witnesses say, the 144,000 mentioned in Revelation 14, they're the ones who will inherit the new heavens and the rest of us will inherit the new earth. That's also a misinterpretation. It has no biblical basis at all. See, the best way is to let the Bible interpret itself. Choose a topic and collect all, that ver all the verses throughout the Bible that relate to that topic, put them side by side and you find the Bible this interprets itself. But some people take a passage and start asking questions and then they speculate and come up with fanciful interpretations, which are completely wrong. So the, the, among, <coughs> not all evangelical Americans are dispensations, but some are. Some of them are. But as I said, the most ardent proponent of dispensations theology today in America is John Hagee. All right. That's it. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.